this short video, I will show a hypothetical scenario of evolution to show how nested sets of shared derived characters are the output of evolution. The fact that synapomorphies are the output of evolution is the reason why synapomorphies are used to infer the ancestral relationships between lineages. We do not know ancestral relationships, which can be millions of years in the past, but we can hypothesize likely relationships because synapomorphies infer common ancestors and nested synapomorphies infer the order of ancestors. Derived characters shared by many species infer a more ancient ancestor, and derived characters shared by few species infers a more recent ancestor. For the hypothetical scenario, we consider an ideal case of evolution. We assume that we know the ancestral character states. And we assume that each character is derived only once, that there is no convergent evolution. And we assume that once evolved, a derived character state is never lost. There are no reversals. We start with an ancestral population where individuals have flowers with sepals, petals, two stamens, and a carpal. We then imagine the population splits into two independently evolving lineages. The black dot represents the node, the common ancestor. Next, we imagine in one lineage, mutation creating character variation in the shape of the receptacle, resulting in a cup-shaped receptacle. Initially, uh, this trait is at low frequency, but if selected for, for example, increasing pollination efficiency, reproductive success, then it increases in frequency within the population until all individuals have this particular uh, character state. Next, we imagine the population splits. Both new lineages have the derived character state of a cup-shaped receptacle called the hypanthium. The hypanthium is now a synapomorphy between lineages A and B. Both lineages share the character state, and it is derived because the outgroup lineage, which represents the ancestral character states, lacks a hypanthium. The lineages continue to evolve independently, with mutation creating new character states, such as doubling the number of stamens and mutation resulting in spots on petals. As time passes, the population split more, creating more lineages, which evolve independently with mutation creating new character states, such as spots on sepals or the loss of petals. In these other lineages, mutation creates different character states, such as a darkened receptacle or hairs growing on the sepals. Further splitting of populations now results in six lineages. Characters 1 through 4 and 7 are synapomorphies. Each is derived and shared. For example, character 4 is derived and shared by lineages A and B. Characters 5 and 6 are not synapomorphies. They are derived but not shared. They're called apomorphies. Note that there is nesting of synapomorphies. For example, lineages A through F all share character 1, but only lineages A through C share character 2. And within the, the AC group, only A and B share character 4. So the nesting shows the branch order, the nodes, the common ancestors. Evolution continues and populations split, creating more lineages that evolve independently. We now arrive at the present and see that evolution has created these 10 species with similarities and differences. Importantly, an output of evolution are these nested synapomorphies. Of course, we do not know the past relationships between these lineages. However, we do know that evolution creates nested synapomorphies, and that these synapomorphies infer common ancestors and the branching pattern, the evolutionary history or phylogeny. Taking into account these three assumptions, we can now look for synapomorphies to infer the relationships among these lineages. We see that lineages A through I all have a hypanthium, which is missing in the outgroup. The hypanthium infers lineages A through I share a common ancestor. Because nine lineages share the character, the common ancestor goes far back in time. Next, we see that lineages A and B have a bulbous ovary. The base of the carpal is like a bulb. No other lineage has this character state. The bulbous ovary infers a recent common ancestor for lineages A and B. Because it is shared between only two lineages, the ancestor is much more recent than the ancestor inferred by the origin of the hypanthium. Lineages D and E are the only lineages that have lost their petals. This infers a recent common ancestor for these two lineages. Lineages H and I are the only lineages with fused stamens, 
inferring a recent common ancestor for these two lineages. Lineages A, B, and C all have spotted sepals, inferring a common ancestor for these three lineages. Lineages G, H, and I all have hairy sepals, inferring a common ancestor for these three lineages. Five lineages, A, B, C, D, and E, all have double the number of stamens, inferring a more ancient common ancestor. Four lineages have spotted petals, lineages F, G, H, and I, so this infers a somewhat ancient common ancestor for those four lineages. The darkened receptacle of lineage F and the thorns of lineage E are derived, but they're not shared with any other lineage, so they are not useful for inferring common ancestors. Next, we draw lines to connect the lineages to their common ancestors, and lines from the more recent common ancestors to the more ancient common ancestors. And some more lines, and two more lines to connect the original two lineages back to the common ancestor of all nine lineages that evolved the hypanthium. Hopefully, this hypothetical scenario has helped you understand the logic of using synapomorphies to infer phylogeny. Synapomorphies are the output of evolution, populations splitting, and evolving new character states, that is, descent with modification. Therefore, synapomorphies are used to infer common ancestors, and nesting tells us the order of ancestors, from more recent to more ancient ancestors. The logic for using synapomorphies is straightforward given the three assumptions for an ideal case. However, in reality, we do not know the ancestral characters for sure, and use some methods called outgroup analysis to kind of infer those character states. Also, convergent evolution happens quite often. Lineages independently evolve the same character state, and in addition, derived characters can be lost sometimes. Reversals do happen. Because we do not know for sure the ancestral character states, and convergent evolution and reversals happen, there is uncertainty in whether given synapomorphies are true or not, and for a set of species being analyzed, multiple trees can be drawn to explain the origins of the derived character states. A variety of logic and st statistical techniques are used to find confidence in one of the many possible trees. We don't cover these techniques in BOT 220. But here they are, parsimony analysis, likelihood analysis, Bayesian analysis, neighbor joining, and bootstrapping. Here are some character states of violet from my backyard. I wonder how many species in the violet family have these character states, or other states, particularly the spur, the extension of the petals. Inside the spur, there are two stamens that have an outgrowth. At the tip of the stamen spur, cells secrete nectar. Have a good day!